Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of the My Love of Golf podcast, wherever you are around Australia, around the world, as always. We thank you for giving up your time to tune in to the golf-loving team that we have here at the My Love of Golf podcast. And we have the full team here tonight to talk about the digest the great major that we had the second major of the year of course it was a pga championship there's so much to talk about the guys were up to the wee hours are up early and we've got magic mike and rocket here to join us so let's get those guys in and talk about the pga and what's coming ahead in this week of golf on tour thanks for joining us we'll speak to you soon uh, of course we will speak to you soon <laughs> very soon because we just played the music here we are uh magic mike Reedy, welcome back you had a week off last week uh in um, in the lead up to the PGA, we missed you absolutely, but we had the Rocket Man here. My, Mike, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me back on your show. Oh, thanks for um making the commitment to join us back on the show. Um, and of course, uh, Rocket Rod Heron, how are you up there in uh sunny Queensland? Are you well? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Two, two weeks in a row for you. Uh, this is becoming a bit of a like old times. Um, but of course you are the majors man, as we announced last week, we had the majors man on the team and, uh, I know that you are very involved and very engaged for the PGA and ultimately the win, which of course we're going to talk about, uh, your boy Brooks is back. Um, if, if I'm, if I'm a bit jittery tonight, it's not me being, if I look jittery on the screen, on the zoom here, um, we'll have to get back in, into making the zoom some, and putting them back on the, the the YouTube channel, which I've been a bit slack with just because of we're all busy. But if I seem a bit like jittery, I'm standing up, and it's the first time I've ever recorded a podcast standing up. So it is a uh, first for the My Love of Golf uh, team. But this is my new commitment. We usually start off by you know checking in with each other, well, how how the weekend golf was. Still not playing any golf because my back's still a bit cactus. But this is part of the uh, the new regime, the winter regime. Back in the pool, back in the cardio section of the gym and standing up um so i've rearranged this podcast studio which is otherwise known as a wardrobe um soundproof wardrobe very well soundproof you can see it there rocket there's all that uh rearranged it and i'm standing up so I'll, i will be doing this podcast from this point forward standing up and i think it's going to give me a new level of freedom new level of creativity new new way to think um without having being my fat backside um Kate Sedi- the sedi- sedatory self uh, it wasn't a great chair. It was a sixty dollar Kmart chair that I bought about oh, no, you five. You can't do that. You yeah, five that. five years ago, it was a lounge chair, and it was when it became an editing studio. Um, it was no good. But, if there's um, one thing you got to invest in, you got to invest in a damn chair if you're going to be sitting that thing. Yeah. Uh well, I'll I will have to. Is there a stand up? Is there a chair that goes with a stand up desk? Like that no, you just high? need a good. No, you just need a good chair. Okay. You just need a good chair. Uh, good chairs, Danny. Um, so I've done it with for myself. Like I have uh, an actual gaming chair. So really good gaming chair. Oh yeah. Um, massive. You a massive gamer? You played no. a bit of, ga- bit of game? No, but the thing is, though, they design them. It's de- designed for sitting on your ass and for long periods of time. Okay. Um, you know what's brought all this on? Other than having a bad back and me sort of having to get into a better position, so I can actually get back out and play golf and be a bit more competitive. And the pool and the gym part of it, you know, I brought it on. It was quite, it was quite shattering. No. I was fat shamed by a customer. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Joe, who I uh, won't say his last name, but Joe came in and said, okay, man, how are you going? Geez, you put some weight on since I last saw you. Thanks very much, Joe. Uh-huh. So uh, anyway. Here's, um, here's your box of ball minus a couple of sleeves. Exactly right. That's uh ten percent <laughs> extra. No drummer club discount for you this week. I'm, but uh anyway, thanks, Joe. You've you've motivated me to um change the studio around. Um and I've got the sexy, sexy lights on. So uh I've got the Roxanne put on your red lights there. It's all happening here. It's all changed. <laughs> okay, so the PGA uh at um Oak Hill. Oak Hill, we gave it a Pretty good rap last week, uh, Rocket. You gave us some of your best about the Donald Ross um, course, and you know, pretty pretty accurately too. As it panned out, um, as we watched the play, you know, a lot of the stuff that we spoke about, you suggested. So, sorry, you spoke about um, that were potentially going to happen in play. Pretty much came to bear, and um, as did the score that you portrayed, you foresaw, um, came to bear. Uh, the winner came to bear. For in the teeps of sense for you and I. So it was all, all happening. Mike, um, you know, how was, how was your, what were your sort of overarching hot takes from the PGA championship? Uh, it was a good event. Um, all round 
you know, tough but fair. I think probably the only part that, the only probable downside was round one seemed to, to be a little bit uneven between the the waves. But, um, yeah, other than that, not much you can do about the weather. You get the good and you get the bad. So, other than that, yeah, I don't think they could have, I, th- I think they couldn't have hoped for a better event. It was the morning, morning late that was the sort of preferred yeah. section, wasn't it? You know, the, yeah. The, the, the leaders and the cut, a lot of the cut players came from that morning late swing. Yeah, it was a funny one where they, day one was supposed to be pretty lean for weather, wind wise. And then the Friday was going to be windy all day. Um, but it kind of ended up being a little bit windy morning day one. And then it kind of teetered off in the afternoon. And yeah, it just didn't quite, didn't quite pan out the right way. So a couple of people got caught on the wrong side. I think there was a, I think I put it on the Discord. There was a, um, the Friday guys put up a good stat that effectively the top eight through round, two rounds had all been from the same side of the waves. So, I mean, it wasn't like a, you, uh, an open championship, real, you know, nuts and bolts throw you out the window, but it was, you know, it was there. One and a half shots, I think it was, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it was good that it came on. Well, yeah. Those first two rounds, like, it was like 11 o'clock, sort of 1130. It came on. And uh, they had the featured groups on, and I got quite involved watching the fe- featured group. Uh, Scotty was um, getting a lot of coverage in those first couple of days. I remember falling asleep, and then they had this uh, when they were—I don't know who does who did the coverage that we watched here on in Australia. Was it ESPN? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus. Yeah. Um, they had that shot of the bubbling brook. Did you see? Oh, yeah, on day yeah, on day two like, when it was pissing that, with rain, and that was like the 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 pause screen. And like I'd watch it, and they, when they'd cut between the groups, and then I fell asleep, and then they work. It was like the 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 test pattern. So that bubbling yeah. brook, and it was fascinating. I was watching which way is the water swirling? Is it swirling different this time? Because it was like live. Um, boy. Um, okay. Let's get in. Let's let's get into it. What well, so what happened, what, Rocket? You know, what was your what was your overview of the PGA Championship? Of course, your boy Brooks won. You've got his, you've got him there in your background, um, angry, <laughs> angry, sad, happy, annoyed. Uh, for the for the benefit of people who won't watch the YouTube, if we do or don't put it up, we've all got a little screen background. As I said, I've got the uh, red red light on the background. Mike's got his famous um, Nike shoe wall of his shoe collection. Uh, Rock has got a picture of Brooks Kepka um, with all of the emotions that Brooks. Kepka uh, displays in his life: um, angry, sad, happy, annoyed, um, and a picture to represent each of those emotions. The picture is all the same on every emotion. So that probably wraps up, uh, you know, a pretty good snapshot of one of the reasons how Brooks got the job done, keeping his emotions in control and getting back what, whatever it was that he won't tell anyone, whatever it was that he learned after the Masters. Um, and what he he and his brothers caddy talked about, and when they digested that master's performance, and his brothers caddy ripped him a new one, um, whatever it was that he won't tell anyone, and he made that clear several times. Um, but, uh, I, he, I no, he, pro- he did. No, no, he did. He was oh. he was quite. He was actually bef- it was before, I think it was this halfway mark or after the third round. Um, he was asked about the masters and and like what he learnt, and he said, "Was it after the second round? Was it after no, it was third round." It was after third, third round. round. Yeah. yeah. And he was just goes, I'm going to go out there and play not to lose. No, I'm going to play to win. He said Cause, that. Because he goes, I, I was I was playing the Masters. to I was trying not to lose rather than yeah. going out there to play to win. But there was something else that he, that, that he said, and it was in his, I think, final press conference where, and he, he batted, batted, batted it away a couple of times. I'm well, someone sure. might have heard, you know, depending on whatever the conversation is, like it would be probably a bit more detailed. You know, mm-hmm. so he probably didn't reveal what the conversation was, but in terms of his approach, like he said exactly what he was going to do. And if you go, if anyone goes back and watches the final round, even just those final thirty six holes, he played, he played exactly like that. He was playing to defend a lead Offense rather than just defense. play golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you if you watch the final round, it was he did exactly what he said he was going to do, and. I was loving every minute of it, every minute of it. Um, nervous, but loving every minute of it. So for me, like I'm, you know, just the PGA as a whole, right? Because it does get it does get punched punched in the neck a lot 
being, big, being the fourth major, we'll call it the fourth major in terms of where everyone ranks it with everyone else. And just the the event as a whole, you know, all the little storylines that, that were there, um, the play, the the people that were coming near, near the top of the leaderboard and things like that, all the little stories are playing out. It was just, it was awesome. Like, you know, I wish I got to see a lot more, but, you know, the the time obviously with um, New York makes it a little bit, bit challenging at times. But I tried to get the feature groups as much as I could and then try to watch as much as I could in the morning and, and if I had time to watch any of the replays, I'd, I'd do that. But then, you know, the third round, the final round, they were the they were the main ones which I sunk my teeth into. Um, and, yeah, it was, for me, because everyone knows I'm a massive Brooks fan and oh, I didn't think he was ever going to get back to this stage ever again because of his knee. And, like, if you watch people watch talk about full swing, he talks about it then, like he's – this brash American and um, chock full of confidence, and he's the complete opposite on on full swing. And you know, to think about the Masters, and it's the you know I wrote it in the Discord. Like when you when you lose a lot of close ones, like you think back, his last win was twenty nineteen PGA. He finished runner up at the Masters to Tiger. And he was also one of the ones that dumped it in the drink on 12. Missed his opportunities there. Then he his runner-up defending the US Open to Gary Woodland because he had a, uh, he faulted in the middle of that round. He nearly choked his way out of the PGA. He was tied for fourth and playing, putting horribly for the Open Championship, which Lowry won. Then his next contention was, that's when he, after that, he'd, he'd sort of, oh, he still, I think he'd hurt his knee then, but then, he was, and then he done more damage again, and then, you know, his next time he was contending was twenty one uh, at Kiwa, and he was, I don't know, seemed like he was a shadow of himself. And then he go, he contends again at the, at the Masters, and he's got this, well, fairly commanding lead. And you think old school Brooks would just, you know, stomp people, but you know, he John Rahm ran over him, and. You kind of think if when you when you have that those many, like you you're just not failing to convert, like that's gonna it's gonna build up over time, and it's very rare for people to sort of break through that. And the fact that he did in this fashion is, I think that should, um, I know, it instills confidence for me that for him, the next few years from a major's perspective, he's just going to be formidable, and it shows that he has a mental strength to come. You know, I think he's gone on a run, a lot of injuries, gone on the downside, come back out the other end and and starting to hit back into the same sort of form that he had over that, you know, three or four year period. Like I'm getting really excited about him in majors. Mike, you and I spoke about, so when we sort of did the digestion of full swing and for me, and I, I haven't gone back and listened to it, but I, if I had to surmise, I said full swing for me in the interest level peaked in episode two, which was the the Brooks um, episode. And I, to, you know, commend Brooks for being so open and being so raw, you know, like he, he just let, let people know what he was think, feeling and thinking. And, you know, some people sort of chastise that. And, but I, I wonder if that is part of, you know, this re-energization of, you know, Brooks Kepka, the golfing beast, um, you know, after he's gone through that and he's obviously listened and watched to it and he's heard people talk about it, whether that affects him or not, but you know, a little bit like therapy, um, you know, had to, had to get that out there and, and then come back from it. Of course, the injury part physically, you know, that's part of it as well. What do you, what do you think when you, when you see this revitalization of the Brooks? Um, I probably put it to, for me, I just put it down to his fitness. I think, yeah, I think I look at him as a guy who uh, was probably quite stressed about his future playing the game that he loves because his knee was cooked and he got offered a lot of money. There was too much to knock back. And knowing full well he was still going to play the tournaments that he gets up for. And he gets up for major, simple as that. And he, he's proved that time and time again. Rocket's just giving you the list. So if I'm him and I know I can keep playing majors, which are the only things I care about, and someone's going to pay me schoolings to go and do this. I I think it 
I think it actually works for him really well because he can go and do what he wants on live tour and not be kind of fast about anything. Not too super dissimilar to probably the way he was on the PGA Tour. He didn't exactly go out and dominate PGA Tour events like he does majors. He finds a he finds a fifth leg. So yeah. um yeah. I think physically, I, I, but I still think that where he was at, I think emotionally and, and mental performance wise, he certainly mm. seems to have bounced oh, he, back. He was cactus. Sh- yeah, yeah. That that we did talk about it. I mean, um, in in um, full swing, yeah, he, he was he was clearly weighing up whether he was going to be able to do it, get to that point again. But I think it was probably more, yeah, that definitely he was not within him. It was within himself, but. I think it was probably more around how his knee was because, yeah, we will never know. Same mm. as like Tiger's injuries or any other, anyone else anywhere. Oh, yeah, I don't. I actually think it would have been – I actually think it was quite bad because I still remember before Liv when he signed that deal with Strixon, I think I remember on this podcast going, the fact he signed it, he knows that he's he's got issues and he's trying to cash in when he can because if his career could be over in five years, you need to make as much money as you possibly can so cash in. Well, as you just said, Rock, Rocket, you know, you're excited about uh, the next few years of majors that he's got wrapped up and will obviously continue to play. Um, you know, the way that he – when did when did he put the foot to the floorboards, I guess, for you? You know, when, when did that moment come? Was there a moment that you, you saw Brooks and you went, he's going to win here, he's got this, this is done? What, you mean this tournament? Yeah, yeah, this tournament, yeah. As soon as he had the lead going in the final round. Right. And Mike, yeah, you know, was there any, any, you know, did you, what did you think of Brooks after round one? You know, I think I think I bet him in there a little. Actually, I yeah. think it was, for me, the third round, I think he birdied the last couple of holes in the last four holes, which are pretty pretty hard. I, I bet him. The other, I bet him to round, round. I bet him to be round one leader. Um, yes. Very stupidly, I didn't bet him to be the overall winner, which was crazy. Um, I don't know. I said to you, and I apologise that I'm not a gambler. I can barely work the app, um, let alone understand how the bets work. Um, and that seems fairly stupid for you, those of you that are listening. Um, but I bet him for round one leader, but not the overall win. Um, that happens. It happens, yes. When did you think that he was, you know, um, going to tear it apart? Yeah, look, seeing his name in the mix, I mean, he was probably fifth favourite of the tournament. So when you see someone who's quite up there at the beginning of the tournament price-wise in the mix through two rounds, you have to think he's a chance. I think most people would have been thinking the same as me. Um, they'll probably sit there going, Bryson's not going to win. Uh, Hovland at some point it's going to choke and Scotty Scheffler's in the mix and he's the one that's probably going to win and Brooks will probably give him a run. And then Scotty in round three played horrendously and Brooks went past him. And I think at that point everyone went, yeah, no, nah, Brooks has won. But, but, but I don't think he's going to get caught here. I think it was pretty impressive by Hovland to hang on, but yeah, I don't, I don't think, um, yeah, I, I don't think I was too concerned about him not winning at that point. So what about, um, some of the other storylines and performances that stood out for, for you, you know, Rocket, you mentioned all those storylines that are there. And of course we can't not talk about the, uh, the block party, um, which everyone, the whole world is, uh, you know, jumped on the, on the Michael block, uh, train to, to, I think he's up to like 180,000 Instagram followers. I don't know how many he had before this, because obviously we didn't, didn't know of him. Um, or well, maybe, maybe you did Rocket, Cause he has, the thing is, a lot of people I, I was speaking to yesterday in the golf shop who were mentioning it um, thought thought that he was just new to golf. Like he was just literally a PGA pro coaching and then qualified through the sectionals or whatever way and um, has turned up and finished top 15. Now he's actually played in the PGA Tour numerous times before, Corn Ferry Tour, like 25 starts. He only made a few cuts, but he'd won 75 grand, but he played in some fairly sizable events going back to like 2014, 13, 12, seven. So he's he certainly tournament um, experienced. Um, I played in, I think maybe five PJs, uh, PJ Correct. championships. So he's played in like seven majors in total. Um, so he wasn't inexperienced, but I guess when you have had and lost your card and lost your way within tournament golf, and then you end up on the range coaching at a club, you know, engaging with the members, it's a fairly 
sizable story and obviously the performance that he had has caught, as I said, caught the world. Um, did you know much about the uh, block party beforehand? No. It, it, his story, which I'm just not going to recount because it's, like, it's, it's everywhere, but um, I call it for the week, it was the cherry on top. Like if you don't have his story, like the tournament would be like a, you know, you give it nine out of 10. His story and then just how he played was just, that's the, that was just a, that was like a bonus, massive bonus. And then off the back of that, you know, he's got himself an invite to play Colonial this week. Yep. And I think he's got Canadian Open as well. What a way to do it, right? So, yeah, he, hmm. he's he's made, he's got paired with Rory in the last round. Um, he's made an ace, like a slam dunk ace. Slam dunk, that was awesome. And then a couple of significant up and downs, which, you know, as we know, now oh, massive know, up and downs. <laughs> had some fairly, fair, fairly, um, that's a new word. You can use that if you want. Um, a fairly serious impacts into what's going to happen for his future. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy to to think about it, and it seems just like a great guy, you know. Obviously, can play some golf. Had a shank, had a shank out there as, as well. So, yeah, um, well, I'm, had I'm a, eleven or fi- no, fifteen. Had 11. a bit of had a bit of everything. Uh, no, it was good. But Mike, sorry, go on. But you know the the others like you go Scheffler, you know, just showing again who he is. Hovland, who's going to break through at some point, we'll call it. He's getting closer to the end. Unfortunately, you know, it's the, the face on 16 strikes again. And then, you know, backdoor Rory again. But, you know, I think, you know, you've got Cam Davis finished tied for fourth. He gets a gets a start in next year's Masters. And he's, his first top 10 finish in a major shoots uh, 65 in the final round. That's that's huge. awesome. Uh, uh, that's awesome because the thing is, he's he, he's, you know, I've, I know I've talked about him before, but you know he's got all the tools. The thing that he just needs to continue to improve is his wedge game. Like he's, and this is probably probably why I finished tied the fourth because you know back to wedge, you know, from one hundred and forty in the this course wasn't going to suit the people that are good from one hundred and forty in. So. That's a weaker part of Cam's game. So him finishing fourth makes sense because he's really long, hits it high, pretty good ball striker. He's okay with a putter. Um, so, you know, him to finish off like that, that's, that's, I, I don't think that gets talked about enough because that was, that was a really good finish. And it's good confidence booster for the young man. And I think that finish pretty much, again, secures his card for, oh no, he still would have had another exemption, another year running on exemption. But either way, you know, it's in the masters. He, he, yeah, Masters, but it might even get him a bit closer to the the top end of like Tour Championship. I don't think he made Tour Championship last year. No, I don't think so. Because um, if he makes Tour Championship, then he gets into all the majors again the, the year after and some other bigger events as well. So, Well, I wonder if he'll come back and defend his Sandbelt class, <laughs> Sandbelt Invitational, where we all learned and saw firsthand that he's an absolute supreme ball striker. Wouldn't be um, surprised he's that sort of kid. Uh, let's just go back up to Scheffler. Um, Shovels. He, shovel. shovel. Uh, according to uh, our rules, rules uh, mate, that uh, he was just moving loose impediments, but uh, it certainly didn't look very, very um, authentic uh, in the spirit of the rules. But um, as we moved on, but we won't talk about that because we spoke about that last week. Is he underperforming at the moment? Yeah, I know he's finished T2 and he's finished two behind the, the lead, but is he... Is no. he no. Is under, not not no. underperforming? I think Again, he's finished top twelve, to... top twelve in his last twenty events or something. Okay, yeah. I, I'm going off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know, but no, nah, he's he's. And... It's funny the swings and roundabouts. We we we're all we all have um, and it's not big on new rosters. Every everyone in golf, we've all got memories of goldfish. Like, um, Ram doesn't play for a couple of rounds, and we all go, oh, Ram's no good. And, Rory doesn't play good for a couple of rounds. Like Rory's no good. I'm not, not, he's not quite there. He's not quite at Scheffler and Rams level. And then two two weeks later, it's oh well, Brooks is clearly the best on planet Earth. And you know this guy's, um, nah, he's he's 
he wouldn't be concerned about anything. And he's playing this week and probably goes out and wins. Um, he's yeah, he's Ram Ram and Scheffler are comfortably best two players in in the world, comfortably. Um, but I know people probably won't think this is a popular opinion, but Rory's not far behind. Oh, here's the thing: is that even though he's here's the thing: is that I think our expectation of Rory is the thing that. You know, if you remove the expectation of Rory, you would probably everyone would probably be going, "Oh my God, he's another top ten in the major, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. You know, because I think we all again back to what Mike's saying about that. We forget, like he won four majors in a very short period of time ten years ago, and he hasn't won anything since. But the thing is, though, he's been winning, except for a couple of years, he's won he wins multiple times a year. He's always contending in lots of events doesn't miss many cuts and his world ranking for the last 10, 10 plus years, I don't think he's been outside the top 20. Like, mm. no, you know, the only other person until last year that could hold in, you could put into that standard for the last decade is DJ. I just looked up Sheffler's results from for first event of the year was Korea. So that was T45. And then he's gone third, ninth, second, seventh, eleventh, first, twelfth, fourth, first, fourth, tenth, eleventh, fifth, second. Freak. Just just shell and peas. Uh, oh. uh, a lazy, a lazy fourteen point four million in prize money. Just just in prize money. Just that'll do. That'll do. But, You'll but, take that. Yeah. And, and if we could we could we could pick on on Roars. So if you go back to jeez. If you, if you just go twenty twenty three. He's won first, four times in the last twelve months. Yeah, so like just this year, first thirty tied for thirty second, tied for twenty ninth, second, miscut, cut, third, miss cut, tied for forty seventh, seventh, and then the year before that, it was like if I go backwards, win, tied for fourth, fourth, tied for second, win, tied for eighth, cut, third. Yeah, that yeah that really good run there for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the the, got, the the boy can play. Last Although I will, I will say that um, Andy Johnson on um, Shotgun Start actually dissected his problem the best. The problem with Rory the best. Okay. For those of that hasn't listened to Andy Shotgun on... Oh, he just uh, talks Andy about Shotgun his strategy. Down. Like he broke it down into... Um, like he talks about Brooks, right? And this is, this is why Brooks is just geared for majors. Is he, he plays aggressive, but at the same time he has a strategy and a plan. And he plays to that, and he kind of sticks to it, and doesn't really waver from it. And he and he's really focused on making no mistakes. And and he, I think even one of the one of the interviews he talked about this week, and he said doubles kill you. Doubles, you make doubles in majors, and it kills you. Like even if you just make one, it kills you. Um, and so he made eighteen birdies, eighteen birdies for the week, and had nine, obviously nine bogeys. But then Rory had something like 16 birdies, but he had, I don't know, 14, 14 bogeys. Must have 14, it, yeah. And, and and the thing is that if he, he goes, you know, Rory, it's like you look at it and he goes, he just makes mistakes. Like they're just, sometimes you watch him play a hole and you're like, what are you doing? Like, why are you hitting it there? It's almost like he's, you know, he can't find this middle ground, can't find the right, he's trying to freewheel it and then he's, thinks too much and you can't find it, you know, and Andy Johnson just boiled it down. He said, "What Rory? when Rory plays, he doesn't actually have a strategy, like a plan on how to play the course. Like it's a major, like how do you plot your way around the course and make sure that you avoid mistakes? And he said he just makes too many mistakes because he doesn't have a plan. How much of that uh, would you put down to Rory's caddy? Certainly pressure. I mean, there's more and more people talking about the fact that, you know, he's, his caddy's probably not a, it's a mate, not a professional caddy. I mean, he's a professional caddy, but, um, you know, if someone like Paul Tesori was on the market or, or these guys were on the market, he should be talking to those guys and not going for someone that's not going to overrule him. That's what people kept asking. Yeah. Well, that, and that's, and that's a good point, right? It's one of those things where when you go to someone else who's, who's your caddy and is your friend, but the thing is, though, do, are you giving him license to to tell you that you're being a dickhead, right? And so he sacked a very very good caddy 
and the guy he won all his majors with because I think they had disagreements because I think maybe that caddy was also telling Rory, he's like, you're going about this wrong. And he hired his mate and it's been nearly six, seven years. And you would, you know, I would kind of, for the first few years, like you would kind of be like, you know, this is ridiculous. But over time as a caddy, you would think you would kind of learn what, what, you know, find find some ground. Like, you know, the same thing happened with Dustin and his brother. But the thing is, though, he's, he's, you know, they've found a good middle ground, even though it's his brother and his brother's able to kind of tell him and direct him and stuff like that. Um, um, but Brooks, uh, uh, Dustin's a different beast. But yeah, it's, there, there's something has to change. And, and it's like, really when it comes down to it, it's like someone telling Rory how he should play or he needs to figure out a strategy and just kind of stick to it. Okay. But yeah. It's got all the skills. That's the thing. It sucks. It's got all the skills, but he just makes too many mistakes in majors. And that's why that's why he's backdoor all the time. Last he's week you've been a bit harsh things. with the backdoor. He was pretty good this week. He was pretty rock steady this week. Hey, I couldn't I couldn't help myself, right? <laughs> There's about five or six ahead of him in the backdoor top ten options. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's it's good. Sixty, yeah, it's a little backdoor. Look, as a, not not as not as full on backdoor as normal. Not as a but it's just, two years two years no. ago with his nine under in the final. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not the not the lowest round of the day to finish, you know, top five or something like that. It's like, yeah, we'll call it this one was, you know, you know he, he he had the keys, you know, had the keys. <laughs> we uh, we um we chatted last week and we said, yeah, you know, to me, it feels like this year could be a year that we see. One player, one player win two majors. If if you had to, if you're having a bet, um, don't leave me with the bet because I'll mess it up. I won't, I won't do it. I won't press the place bet button on the app or on something like that. So don't leave it to me. But if you had to have a bet out of um, Ram or Brooks, someone who's going to win a second major this year, where would you place that bet? Ram, Ram, yeah, Rocket. Mm, we've got him. He's thinking. We might have to place a bet now. Given I was going to say, uh, you, you, you might... think and I'll tell you why I think Ram. Yeah, that go. Go. Because if I'm placing a bet, I'm going with the odds in my favour. Odds in my favour says Ram's the best player, as we just said, in the world. So, and he's already got one. So, for him to win another, best option. That's it. Yeah, I, I actually think because of because of the two courses that are left, I still think it's Brooks. Like LA Country Club is going to be interesting because it's going to be firm. It's, it's going to be really firm. Um, haven't seen enough about what it's going to be like rough wise and things like that. Um, and I, I think that one's really going to be that one's going to be really challenging. And then Royal Liverpool, I don't know. I, the last couple of Royal Liverpool ones have been quite, I get quite dry there. So it can be a bit of a, uh, that's a real strategy one. Uh, that one could, you know, if there's no wind, I would say Ram, but if it gets windy, I'm probably going to be Brooks. Mm. No, I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to stick with my boy. I'm going to have to stick with my boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we've got one uh, one that's picky tip would tip Ram, Ram to um, be another major champion, two times major champion. We've got one with uh, with Brooks. Uh, what say you, people out there listening? Uh, do you think that uh, masters um, masters majors are hard to win? We all know that. We talk, Mike talks about that all the time. Um, but is it the year that someone could win two, and is it going to be one of those two? Okay, other storylines. Uh, what about the Australians? Uh, we had uh, we had a couple of. Uh, Decent results. We've already mentioned Cam Davis um, and all of the accolades that go towards him and obviously the good things that happen for the rest of his season and obviously into next season. Uh, Cam Smith, T9, would you have, would we have, where did we put him up there last week in the figurings, uh, Rocketman? Um, the fact that he finished T9th on this course is actually a pretty impressive effort because 
you need to drive the ball. All right. I haven't seen any stats or anything like that, but um, you know, I think the conditions after the rain leading the final round is is that that's what lent it to him being able to probably score really well. Because if you look at these rounds in the other ones, like it's it's just not up his alley. And I think he was on the wrong side of the draw as well. He got he got a couple of um, he got a couple of nasty ones from a rain perspective. Um, yeah. he's yeah he's the epitome of um the three or four that shot up the leaderboard in the final round once it got a little bit tamer and a little bit softer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have him in the mix at all this week. No. Um, and yeah, look, final round shot him up the leaderboard. So yeah, it, from five hundred to final round, um, where the winners at nine is a very very good round of golf, and he hadn't done any crazy damage before that, like a lot of people had. Um, so yeah. Snuck in. But yeah, off the tee, rubbish. Um, which we know his driver is no good. So all week that was the part that let him down. And shock horror rocket, what do you think was his best at? Putting. Yep, correct. Rank two in putting for the week. Rank two <laughs> rank two in putting. Okay. Where was um uh Brooks ranked across the uh board on some of his stats there, Mike? Why you've got it up. Yeah, so pretty much across the board, top ten. Um, Tita Green is a key stat here, so he's ranked second for the week off the team ninth approach seventh, which is one of the other key stats around the greens. Always important in any of these tournaments where you're going to get missed greens. Uh, and he was third, and putting was his worst, and that was still 15th for the week. So, Manny, very, Manny very, very some clutch parts that was old school Brooks Holland, some of these clutch. So, inside eight for some reason eight feet and in like when he's on like it's yeah. like it's money his best stat for me this week even though it wasn't his highest ranked was his approach and his approach was was um elite even when he was missing fairways he was still hitting greens from further back than most and from out of scrub which people just couldn't do strength like was that. just getting in there <laughs> Like that, the second shot he hit from the side hill lie out of the junk on six. No, his third shot because he had the penalty. Remember the final round where he's hit it yeah. in the in the. In Did the he get piss? a penalty? Yeah, he hit it into the water. Took a drop on the on the mm. on the other side of the bank. So he's on that side hill lie. He's got the tree in front of him, and he's got two hundred to go. So you have got a hook lie, water left out of rough. And he's just powered it onto the green. It's like, yeah, like. And then the sh- then then the other big one from the rough, which was this was like one of those clutch ones. You think straight after Hovland's hit it into the lip, you know, takes a drop out, chunks it back out in the fairway. Brooks is in the fairway, just waiting. No, in the in the in the right rough, waiting, and he just just absolutely mashes some wedge from like one sixty out of just the biggest lettuce on the planet. And hits it to like eight feet, four feet, eight inches, four feet. There we go, four feet, eight inches. Like, yeah, ridiculous. And I got no sympathy for Holland or Connors hitting it into that lip. That's just a poor shot. Absolutely no. Like they weren't. It wasn't like it just clipped the face. No, it was like it's. You might as well have topped it. Yeah, it was two feet below. It was because I know someone asked me about that one. They said, "Oh, you know." unlucky to have been plugged. I mean, no. I said if he actually had a decent contact and hit, it would have hit halfway up the face and it probably would have bounced out. But for them to hit it that low, they've yeah. effectively bladed it. I think they'd put in some new sort of layers of turf, but still there was no one nowhere near clearing it, like not close. Yeah, well, yes, and you've hit it into the area that's the softest part. You've got between yeah. the the bunker and the the lip it's it's just soft soil it's not compacted or anything like that like you've hit it into the worst spot and oh it was funny it's so funny watching victor hitting it and he was in a better spot further to the left and the commentators start talking about Corey connors and see hits it there you hear this oh <laughs> it's like oh my god that's one of the worst shots ever and he had a nine iron a nine iron yeah he, must, he just pure sculled it Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's that stuff that haunts you. That one. Um, okay, so we've got uh, Min Wu, other Australian performers. We had Min Wu. Um, some great results for Min Wu. You know, T eighteen. 
Um, but the, I guess the exciting news coming out of weekend for Minwoo is that, you know, he gets that um, provisional temporary. status, temporary provisional membership onto the PGA Tour. Mike And Foxy. Mike, and Foxy. We'll get to Foxy with T23. Uh, we talked about Foxy last week and how, how good it would be to see him play the whole weekend. And we probably didn't really figure enough into it, and that's because we didn't have you here, Mike, that um, maybe some, you know, weekend action might elevate them on to that provisional temporary um temporary tour membership for the rest of the year, but it certainly has, as we all know now. Uh, so really um, great stuff from from that pair of uh, Australasian golfers. Foxy plus three, Minwoo plus two. He's just loving life at the moment is the young man, Minwoo Lee. Um, recently had a round of Peninsula Kingswood too, um, which I was disappointed that I wasn't there when he was there, played with big Stevie May and a couple of other footballing crew. Um, uh, when he was back down for a uh, tune-up with his coach at the – Australian Golf Centre. Um, I was going to ask you something there, uh, Mike. Um, Son Minwoo Lee. Have you got any stats on Minwoo? Is what, what? Where was his? Yeah, he. Um, yeah, one of the key stats was we just said a minute ago this week, and we knew beforehand was strokes gain approach, and he was putrid. He was ranked seventy first of seventy six for the week. So, um, yeah, you can't, you cannot miss greens and score. So he's scrambling all day. So he's around the greens. He was ranked sixth. He's parting. He was ranked seventh for the week. But yeah, approach 71st and uh, off the tee 35th, middle of the road. Um, but yeah, that, that that's what did it. The Irons did it for him. That killed him. We'll come back to Scotty, but obviously we had Herbie there at T40. Um, had it, yeah, I'm not sure. Herbie had the rough end of the deal. He got quite wet, didn't he, on one of the days? I think everyone got wet that day. That day um, yep. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I, I. Um, yeah, don't know what Herbie's doing. I, 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 he's um, made the yeah. cut. Yeah, you know, pretty much on the number, I think. He, but a lot of people did, it's, it's more just the prep for it. Like I know that it, this stuff's meticulous for all these guys. But I mean, he was in a. He played in one in Japan. Then he went back. I think to maybe home. Then he went back over again. Um, He's picking tournaments here and there. I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is the last year. Has he got one more year of his exemptions? Not sure. I, I wouldn't think that he's exactly flying in regards to retaining his card, even if it is for next year. So, I mean, he's obviously got super confidence. He's, he's a super golfer. But, yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm not sure that he's putting himself in the best spots to, to clean something up and lock stuff in and make his life a bit easier. don't know. I think he's playing. We'll find, this, out, we'll find out in six or eight months. Yeah, I think he's playing this week. Um, okay, uh, back to back to Scotty. Yeah, he was, I think, leading early doors round one. Um, maybe not at the end of the day, but certainly for a good chunk of it, you know, it was going all right in round he, he two. Doubled, he doubled. Um, he doubled the final. His final hole in the dark. Uh, he was right up there in the mix. For, was it the first round or second round? So he had to. Did he have to come back? And I, I've the, got a funny feeling he played it quite late in the day and, yeah. and doubled it in the dark. Yeah, I think and so. That, and that was and that was pretty much setting back. So what did he have in the third round? I, what, what was his round three? Third round he shot 74. Round one, yeah, 68 with a double on the last. Yeah. And round two? 74. 74. With yeah. doubles and bogeys galore. Yeah. Mm. That was it. The, the beginning of the end was a double on 18 round one. But yeah, yeah, he was right in the mix. Actually, I think he would have been leading through round one if he didn't make that double. Yeah, he would have been. Oh, he would have been tied tied with Bryson, I think. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't see the double, but I remember getting up the next morning and um, sorry, the next he played early the next morning, and I was awake late, fell asleep, and went to sleep. And he was like four under or something like that, and then woke up and. He was nowhere. Gone. Um, anything else stand out for you there, gents? Yeah, what about the course? You know, the course, I think you've pretty much summed it up, Rocket. You love the course, but a lot of the players were a little, seemed to be a little bit critical of the long rough and some of the some of the setup. Um, you know, these deep lies and plugged lies that they were all getting, they're just being a bit too precious or, you know, what, what was your read or thoughts around that? I can't, can't fault it. Who was a 
someone threw a club and run no, home. Raham on yeah. first, second round, mm-hmm. second round destroyed two um, um, broadcast mics and like deliberate like evisceration of broadcast mics. Like I, I know I've defended him before with a little bit of his anger and rage and stuff like that, but we'll call it willful damage of property like that. That is, that's a terrible, terrible act. Shocking. Like the first one, I'm trying to remember which hole it was. He was long and he's hitting a chip and he didn't hit it great. And he's walking up near his bag and he's had a wedge in his hand and he's just absolutely eviscerated the mic. And then it was like the next hole. Actually, he did it on the fifth. Did it the back of the fifth. And then the very next hole, the tee shot on six, I think he hit it in the water. I'm not sure. And then the mic was away from his bag and he's walked over and he's just destroyed that one with his driver. Like, that's just, like, really? Mike, did, like, you, did you see any of that, Mike? Uh, only the highlights because it was on the, um, the group, middle of the night our time, yeah, because I know the No Laying Up guys were doing the the broadcast at the time when it was happening, but I was well in bed. I wish we got that. Um, What... Uh... What happens with that? You know, is it just swept under the carpet for no, the he'll masters? Get a, he'll get a fine. Yep. He'll get a fine, or yeah, that we won't know about. Right, because it's, it's... I mean, he'll write a check to charity or fine somewhere. Yeah. Here's ten grand to replace your mics. It's poor form, but isn't it? It's like it's pretty bad. Like, and he had a crack at the the broadcasters as well. You know, like don't point the cameras at me, don't show my face with your cameras because when I've got my angry face on. Uh, well, what's going on? Like, He's all, he can be as good of a player he is and as nice he is, he can also be a complete wanker. Up to the Sergios. Yeah, I think that. I mean, the, those guys, the, 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 he, he needs to know better than that. You know, do it for the kids. I don't know how you want to describe it. Do it for the kids. Do it for the kids, do it for the kids it. and the kittens. That's it. Just think of the kittens. That's it. Um, Every time you get angry and you destroy Mike, you're killing a kitten. <laughs> I mean, if I'm him... He knows for the rest of the week, he's going to have a camera on him no matter what. He was out of it in round one, right? So he, he copped the bad side of the draw, played poorly, um, and was done. So he was never making it making it all the way back. But he still knows the rest of the week he's going to have cameras on him. He's probably in a feature group. He's playing terrible. And he let it get the better of him. And he, you, you just can't do that. You just can't. Okay, as we wrap up the coverage of the PGA, um, anything else, any other stinkers? Uh, from you guys, you know, poor performances or performances that we didn't see coming. Um, you know, Rocket, we probably had Jay Day a little higher and uh, missed the cut. You know, maybe only Fina was the one I didn't expect to play like yeah. that. Um, yep, yeah. Fina uh, and, and Sanjay were the two that yeah. I don't know what happened there. Well, Tony was five over after seven, he... and 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 I'll tell you, I don't know how because one of them got plugged in plugged in a bunker and it cost him a double. And then he had a shot that literally fell into the pot and he just, he was so stiff not to get it out and it cost him another double. Like it was a joke. Yeah. And then he played, I think he played really well for the next 36 and he's sort of climbing his way back up yeah. the leaderboard and then just went backwards again, badly. Yeah. Those two definitely were the ones that I felt should have been in the mix from the data pre-tournament that were very disappointing. Um, the one that I probably had my biggest investment on pre-tournament was Tyrrell Hatton. Um, again, all the data looked like it would be good and he just had a horrendous round one and then played the way I expected him to play for the next three rounds, but he was so far back. I think he had 77 round one. That is um, correct. And he just went kept kept playing well for the rest of the week just to make my life agony. Um, I will say he's really crafting a wicked Amish sort of style beard. <laughs> Yeah, he um he played quite well. I mean, look, he finished T fifteen, and in round one he had seventy seven. So um, look, even if he if he even if he remotely hangs on and keeps at it, you know, three over, he finishes. You know, he finishes three under t- top five. So yeah, disappointing. I just want to give a shout out to the um the Champions Tour players that were representing there. You know, me being the uh, plus fifty uh, brigade, if anyone is plus fifty and follows the Champions Tour, good. Good on you, Patrick Harrington, for making the cut and finishing T50. Uh, but our man, Stephen Alka, who 
who um we talked about last week didn't didn't make the cut at all. Finished plus twelve. Uh, but one, he beat Sean McEwen. I think half. I think everyone bar one beat Sean McEwen. Bobby McIntyre usually gets a chat about the uh, top Scott. He was far from top Scott. Um, okay. What else, gents? Uh, what else? There was something else I wanted to talk about, but um, Ryder Cup. So that was obviously a big discussion point coming out of this championship as uh, we start thinking about teams, team selections. There's a lot of hype around Zach, um, getting all of the questions around. You know, we put Patrick, we put Bryson, we put Brooks, um, DJ in the team, all that sort of stuff. And then there's the DP World Tour saying, well, uh, then the Brad Faxon tearing um, uh, Brandall apart sort of thing with it's just golf, mate. Where do you guys... Where are you guys seeing it? Rocket, where are you go first? Pick your best team, Kez. Okay. Mike? Um, yeah, I think the majority of this stuff comes from people caring about live more than anything else, and I think they love the storyline because it's us against the world, which is cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't see in, I think we talked about it today. It was today, yeah, on um, on the Discord group. There's 0% chance someone like Patrick Reed's getting picked. He, and he doesn't deserve to get picked on his form at all in, no. in, a, in a right cup. Um, Brooks is a guarantee. If he doesn't get picked, it's a joke. Um, yep. He has to get picked. Um, DJ's DJ. maybe. He's a maybe, I think. He's right on the border. I mean, he if he plays well in maybe one of the, or both the next two majors, I think he's right in the mix. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get in. I don't, it's not an anti live take. He's just not going to get in on He could win the next 10 events and live. No one's picking him on that. They just won't. No. Um, and the guys that are in that are already qualified, like, they're not coming out. Like, I know, I think I talked about it today. The two that are probably the ones that are in that top 12, 13. Because you've got to take out Zaltoris because he's not playing. So the next that that brings in Tony Finau from 13 into the 12 spot. The next two guys are Wyndham Clark and um, Kurt, Kurt Kitayama. Now Kurt Kitayama playing as good as anyone at all. Like he he he's had such a good year. There's no way you could make an argument for Patrick Reed to get in over him. No. Nah. Brooks definitely. Brooks would definitely be ahead of him. And I reckon him and DJ 50-50 toss a coin. I think Wyndham comes in, goes out for Brooks, and I think that the last spot is if DJ comes in, it's it's probably for Kurt Kitayama. But again, yeah, Kurt Kitayama finished T4 this week again. He's, he's playing great golf. Is Bryson anywhere in that team? No, no nah. chance. No nah. chance? Nah. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is his, and self-proclaimed by him, this is his best event in probably two years. Yeah. He's been nowhere. Um, he would need to fi- he would need to finish top ten in the the even even if he finished top ten at the U.S. Open and then the Open Championship, I still don't reckon I'd pick him. Okay. Well, it's a it's a hot topic, and you know, I think on the European Tour side, you know, which is the DP World have made their position very 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 clear. Even if uh, it was just golf and uh, pick the best golfers to represent uh, the continent. There's probably no live players getting in there. Maybe Tommy Peters might be the last pick, might sneak in there, but there's probably no one else that. There's there's no there's no there's no. no one that's on live that's a that one where you go oh it'd be no, a shame exactly. if they missed out yeah so current twelve, Ram, Rory, uh, Victor Perez they're the automatic ones at the moment, um but behind that I mean if I could if I'm just going to run my eye down and slot people in and out. Yannick Paul will be 50-50. Moronk surely plays. You have to have to put the big Moronk in. Has to. Shane Love Lowry that. plays. Yep. Fleetwood plays. Tyrrell. Tyrrell plays. Hovland plays. After that, it, it is a lottery. That's the honest answer. It is a lottery. Because you've got guys like George, who's played good on, but don't know if he's a Ryder Cupper. Thunder Bear, again, not not sure. Ategui's had a good year, but again, who knows? It, it is a really, really lean team. But even then, if you think about the guys that aren't there at the moment that have, that have gone to live, I still don't think, you know, the guys that automatically people will think about like Garcia and Poulter and Westwood, I don't think they'd be, I don't think they'd really be in the mix. Yeah. I, I, you'd rather pick the Hoygaard brothers before you pick those guys and yep. put some um, faith some- in the future. And put some miles on their clock. 
so yeah. they're ready for yeah. when you need to contend or yeah. where, you never know what will happen. What number, what position did we get to with the European team before we ran out of, you know, these are, these guys are a lock and they're, they're, it, it, could put, it, put up a fight against uh you know in a match it's um oh you yeah, know i don't think they'll put up a fight it really depends on the course um because it's it's quite mixed the euro one it's a bit different because i mean Jorge is sitting above fleetwood um just because of the way they're doing their points and they do it a little bit differently to the way the u.s picks their team so i, I wouldn't want to guarantee okay. i think it'll shake yeah. out a fair bit we'll keep an eye on it in the next few months Okay. Well, anyway, it was a topic of conversation. Of course, that Johnson got brought into it several times. Um, I would hope that uh, from a US perspective, that's just they just go with the, it's golf, let's pick the best guys to represent the US because that's what we want to see. We want to see the best golfers out there playing in that event, which we all love. Okay. Um, this week, gents. We say, we, we say that. We say that. We want to see the best golfers. Yeah. But the story won't be that. The story will be, why didn't Sergio Garcia get picked? That'll be the story. Okay. Well, maybe it will be. Well, but it won't be. It definitely won't be on the European side because they've said that that's not that's not an option. But yeah, you know, it's still unclear on the US side. No, oh, no, the US has to pick him. They have to pick the guys on the live tour. But even has has a, has the European tour definitively said they're not picking them? I'm pretty sure that they. I, I thought they, they had, had, but then I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure now. Okay. No, I was pretty sure that they. Keith Pelley had been pretty clear on that. I can't recount the exact audio bite or anything like that, but I'm yeah. pretty sure that they were solid on that. Um, okay. Um, this week we've got the Wells, uh, not the Wells Fargo, the um, Colonial, Charles Swab at uh, Colonial in uh, yep. Texas. A few Australians have won that tournament in the past. Can you name any of them, uh, gents? Aussies love Texas. Is this the one where Mark Leishman won? That you, no. you mixed up last time? No. No. Um, no, I've got no idea. Hey, Has Elkington won here? Oh no! Isn't this the um? So this is the one where they give the, they give the uh, the plaid jacket. Um, no, I yeah, think they uh, also, yeah, yeah, they also give it the tartan, too, the yeah. tartan jacket. Um, yeah. It's uh, was it not uh, Adam Scott? Adam Scott's one. Um, yeah, I think so. Bruce Devlin. Bruce De- Bruce Devlin. Oh yeah. Guy. Are you looking these up, or are you doing these off the top of your head? I did. I uh, know. I'm doing it off the top of my head now, but I did look them up earlier on in the day. <laughs> I was going to say, "Geez, Bruce, yeah, Bruce Devlin is one from nowhere." <laughs> <laughs> I thought. Well, I thought you might have got the obvious ones. I was just going back with the Bruce Devlin and Bruce Crampton, actually. By the way, um, from uh, Sydney, Bruce Crampton uh, played at uh, the uh, Factory Adam, of Great Adam, Golfers. Beverly Adam Park. Scott won in 2015. Sorry, 2014. Uh, Rocket Rob Pampling, runner-up in 2008. Craig Popeye Perry, runner-up 1995. IBF in 1988 was the winner. IBF was the other one I was thinking of. Crampton, runner-up in 73. Devlin, 166. Crampton, 165. Kel Nagel, runner-up twice, 60 and 61. There you go. Uh, so, so we've got history here. What's your... Well, we uh, do. Aussies love, uh, Aussies love um, Texas and the West Coast. Played on Bermuda grass. I think we got Bermuda here at uh, Colonial. No um, idea. Pretty sure. No. Um. Okay. What's the What's the lake say, Mike? Um. It is a week where you for a non elevated event. You still got a few big hitters turning up. Uh, Scotty Scheffler's playing. Big Vic Hovland is playing. Tony Tabernacle Finau. <laughs> Jordan Spieth is playing. Um, so there's some some bigger names: Maximus, Homer, Ricky, um, Cole, Dustin Rose, who's playing very very well at the moment. Um, I think this is the one that Cole. Remember, he had that real putting jiggle. I think when Berger beat him here, I think. Yeah, to twenty. Yeah, there we go. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. He had uh, missed that little one from about two feet. Oh, yeah, that'll hurt. Good um, good memory. I thought I was pretty good because I remembered Sam Burns was last year's winner in the tartan jacket, but uh, that's excellent work, Rocket. I think mm-hmm. Colin went out the very next week and won the work day that was played at um, Muirfield. It was um, COVID times. This one's for you, work day. I say that most days at work when I open up work day. Are you are you sponsored by work day at um, the dairy? Uh, yeah, we use it. I think most most big companies use work day for that yeah, sort of jazz. Same. Been a, while since um, I've been, been, been a while since I've been in a big, big company, a little golf shop. Uh, we're not using Workday. That's all your, all your HR needs. 
um, people management stuff. Um, yeah, the Data Lake top fifteen from the top. No shock horror at all. Scotty Scheffler second. Victor Hovland also not that much of a shock. Uh, Tom Hoagie, Tony Finau, Max Homer, Ricky Fowler, Colmore, Kawa, Sepp Straka, Justin Rose, C. Wu Kim, Jordan Spieth, Akshay Bhatia, Ben Martin, K. H. Lee, and Tommy Fleetwood. It's a very um very tight list. I know I wasn't didn't do the show last week. One guy that was right up the top of the data lake, or very close to the top, was um Adam. Not Adam Hadwin. It was um. Adam, the other Canadian. Oh, oh. Uh, he was. He Shank? was right, no, no, he was right in the mix for you know he, he was he was he was at seven hundred and fifty to one and and through uh to think on the day two he, he was two under through uh, a couple of holes and I was getting quite nervous that I was going to. Oh, not Pendrith. No, no. I can't remember his name. Doesn't matter. I'll figure it out later. He's um. He uh he was up the top of the list, and this week the only one that's up the top of the list that's of any sorts of odds. Uh, Barty is about 140. Ben Martin's around 150, and Sepp Strack is about 100 to one. Oh, Adam Svensson was quite short. Adam, Adam Svensson. That's it. <laughs> the Svensson, yeah. The, the, Swe- the Swedish Canadian. Yep. Uh, Sepp Strack, he's a he's a beast. He's a bit of a beast. I don't mind yep. Sepp Strack. He'd, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd, he'd be a chance for the um, European Ryder Cup team too. Yep. Um, who's betting this week in our team? Is uh, you know what? I'll go this week just okay. because I know that it'll get put on. <laughs> get it. Oh, I put it on last week. We we all had a crack at putting <laughs> I'm, it on. I'm, I'm pretty confident that you actually meant to bet DJ and Brooks for the win, though. Not not, not first round leader. Could be. It could have been. <laughs> I looked my... at the bet and I'm like, Dude, they're very interesting picks. Why well, would you just bet first round leader? Well, you know, I'm a little live forward thinking, and you're probably right that I would have tried to throw those two in there, even as a half a wind up to you two blokes. But um, yeah, no, that was terrible, terrible form. I'm don't that. Can I not bet? Can I allocate my bets to whoever I think is going to bet the best instead of me doing it? You can do whatever you like. It's yeah, not, so it's, it's, you know, hey. we're not betting. We're not betting millions. We're just playing around, just having fun. However, however, obviously we've got to talk about the tape stuff. Um, you know, I chastise myself for my oh, yeah. lack of betting skill, but wow, we. I've moved up a couple of places on the leaderboard into into I the should top, have, into I should T3. Have so just before I didn't I didn't have that ready to go. So we had 22 people pick Brooks last week. I know we're jumping around a bit, but people that picked Brooks were Pultz, Rocket, The Shermanator, Jamie Staden, M Log, Roscoe, Public Golf, Golf is an Attitude, Goffy. I'm going to stuff this up again. Michael Lloyd. Yes. Yes. That's fine, Michael. <laughs> not, not, no, Mich- no, I, not, not Mikel, it, not it, Michelle. No, not I Michelle. normally say Mitchell because Mitchell. I, Mitchell, <laughs> but, but I apologize. It's it's just because it's my own name and I'm an idiot. Uh, the Golf Labyrinth, Three Putt or Die, Lee 1149, Hoop 78, Morgie, Sam Windsor, Craft Golf, Headrock 3, Shenry, Young Ice 75, Dave Norster, Jim J, and Jay Brooks all picked Brooks. 22 people. Top five. Shenry with a rocket up to fifth, 13.4 mil. Golfing tattooist just absolutely steadfast in that fourth spot, 14.2. M-Log Roscoe just clips him into 14.8 uh, in third po- position. KT, 15 million flat. And Jim J, $29,000 ahead in first spot, 15.029. So it's getting very tight at the top. So it's like $300. Separating P one and P three roughly, uh, three hundred grand, three hundred grand. Yep. Oh, two hundred and fifty thousand. Yep, correct. Yeah, sorry, three hundred dollars. <laughs> Clearly, math. See, I told you, betting math's not my thing. Three hundred dollars. Um, it's uh, grand. It's very tight. Very tight at the top. So what am I? Fifth. What am I? You are twelve point uh, fourteen point seven five. We'll call it fourteen point seven five. Leaders on four fifteen point oh two nine. So it's like yeah. So three hundred dollars, two hundred eighty grand. Yeah, um, cool. Oh, well, it was good fun. Um, well, I don't so think don't I've forget got... to put your tips in this week. Yeah, don't forget to put your tips in. I'm I'm running out of hot hot ones. Um, Jordan Spieth will be popular. Um, he loves he loves the spot. He's got a truckload of top tens and a win. Um, twenty ninth last week off a wrist injury. I think he'll be very 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 popular. Justin Rose has won here before, playing really really good golf. Um, Tony Finau seems to win tournaments like this and not the big ones. He could be a very good option after a fourth place here last year. 
Um, I'd say they'd be the, the three that most people will work around. I'm going to use up uh, Colin Morikawa, I think, this week as my pick. I feel like this is going to be a week very heavy to the strokes gained approach, and I liked a little bit of what I saw last week from Cole with the irons. Okay. There we go. Uh, Rocket, you got anything else you want to add to uh, any of that? Anything? No one's played any golf. Obviously, didn't did, didn't play any golf last week, Mike. Uh, not last week. I did play the week before. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably down to my lowest handicap in a couple of years, which is very impressive. I um, I think Joe Ptolemyo is a listener, so apologies to Joe because I clipped him in the the uh, Growling Frog uh, daily comp last not Saturday Saturday before. Um, wound in a little forty-two point run I had, which was good. Um, a little bit unlucky not to to get a bit more, to be honest. Was you, cl- you clipped old Joe. I uh, shout out to Joe if he does listen. He plays obviously a teeps to fam. Um, Joe is one of the most supportive people of anything that we do, and also in the drum and golf world, he likes everything, shares everything, um, thumbs up, love hearts, emojis. He's he's a great fella. Uh, I think I've met him in the shop once. I missed him once when he came to say good day, and and you pipped him in the. Oh, I did feel it. bad. I, I literally I, I logged into the to the I turned up to the course to play and they said, Oh, we've got a daily comp and I said, Okay, I'll play. I was playing by myself. And um I signed into um my score and the first name that came up on the top of the leaderboard for the day was Joe Ptolemy. I'm like, This can't be a co- this bloke's gotta be gotta be the guy that's in Teepsta that otherwise is a really big coincidence. And um yeah, I kept an eye on the scoreboard through the day and he was he was in before me. And he had 39 points. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not getting to 39. And um, especially after I lost the ball on the third. And then yeah, I came in in 42. So there you go. Oh, well done. Growling Frog Open, Pip Joe, Ptolemy. Apologies, Joe. Um, Trying to get the team to uh, be a bit more aware of who's, who's yep. to, you know, when to pull a, pull, pull a handbrake I should have on. I should have just walked off the course. Pull, handbrake, should, seven, pull the handbrake on, exactly. Yep. Um, Mike, uh, show us your hoodie on. Uh, I didn't know you were wearing the uh, Prez Cup uh, hoodie. You see my hoodie? I've got a hoodie. You, you're wearing a hoodie, Rocket? What are you, you got Got anything on yours? Oh, it's a Caddy Snacks. You've got the Caddy Snacks hoodie. Uh, have a look at my hoodie. I'm just going to move the microphone for a second or maybe move the camera down. It's very much like the... Um, it's very much like your President's Similar. Cup logo. Yeah. yeah. It's actually Jamie McLaren. It's it's, it's one made by uh, Melbourne City Football Club to commemorate Jamie McLaren's fifth golden boot in the A-League, the most prolific goal scorer in the A-League. Uh, it's got a little golden boot up here. 143 goals the young man scored. Uh, he is a golfer. He is he is a um, friend of the. No, he's not a friend of the podcast, but uh, he's a friend of mine. And um, very very proud to pick up my uh, 80 dollar hoodie down there at the uh, semi final last week when Melbourne City um, saluted and uh, make it to a fourth consecutive grand final with all of the golf boys firing. Andrew Nabu, Jamie McLaren, Scotty Jamison. Um, so just. Do you want to go to Sydney in a couple of weeks' time, Mike? You want to see, you know, you're up in Sydney. Can you stay for the weekend? Can we play any golf on a Saturday and then go to the grand final? Uh, no. Any, any dairy business up there? Oh, there is, but I go to Sydney enough for okay. my liking. <laughs> uh, so I won't be going up. And with all due respect to Melbourne City, I, I probably wouldn't go up for a game of football either. Yeah, I can understand why you want to travel across the West to see the dogs get beat. But anyway, that's all right. You know, I'll go uh, and represent. We, we don't get beat. We uh, we beat Fremantle over there, and then we beat oh, yeah. your side last week, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, no, so you did. Everyone's, <laughs> beat, everyone's beaten my side. Uh, gents, thanks for um, your time again. It's always fun to catch up with you on a uh, weekly basis, and appreciate you coming back, Mike. Uh, Rocket, appreciate your uh, patronage two weeks in a row. Um, you're always welcome, but uh, if you need to go back to um, back to the rest mode, um, you, you just let us yeah, know. Yeah, I've, I've got I've got a bit of trouble coming up. You just let us know when you want to plug in, and we'll plug you in, uh, um, gents. Uh, thanks everyone for listening and taking the time out of your day, uh, your week, your month um, to listen to the this is like 239th episode. Um, keep listening, and uh, and we'll keep doing it. We'll see you next week on the Mile of Golf podcast. Until then, play well.